in the shadow of the Teton Mountain Range and Targhee National Forest. In the heart of Idaho's vast potato fields, there lives a lady and a gentleman. Lonnie Allen and Doug Gibson have made an indelible mark on outdoor recreation, namely in the world of fly fishing. Well, how did they get here? Well, when you miss a fish, I'll try and catch it for you. Wait a minute. You think I'm going to miss a bunch of fish? Oh, I know you will. Oh, you know I will. That's a gimme. Any time a... you think you can catch them all, you, you know, that doesn't happen. I'll save you a few. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. You know, Doug, that if you're in the back of the boat today and you cast into my water, I might get a little ticked off. Am I going to be in the back of the boat? Of course. What about that you you cast over my is flies that, is all that because the time? You, is that because you weigh more than me? Yes. Or is that because you're the boss? Which would you like it to be? I'd rather just have you up there so I can watch what you do. Uh-huh. At the turn of the century, the 19th century, before Highway 20 carved its way to Yellowstone Park, a young couple put down roots along the banks of the warm river. These roots, now approaching a century old, have grown into one of the most treasured and sought after fly fishing destinations the world over. Three Rivers Ranch. Well, that was a long time ago, and the ranch today is very different from those Western days gone by. In the early 1900s, Fred and Berta Lewis homesteaded what is now known as the town of Warm River. Located along the wagon trail to Yellowstone, they saw an opportunity to build a business. A business selling boxed chicken lunches to tourists. Back then, life wasn't easy, especially for a couple of immigrants. Post-Boer War, new to America. I think as it became a boom town, when the railroad decided to go in, that's how this place became an incorporated city. They had the men that were working on the railroad. Not sure if there were women there working as well, but they had them sign a petition to have this become an incorporated city. Fred and Berta's son, Harry, and his young family took over the business in 1957, and it continued to flourish. Warm River Inn grew to become a small resort area, complete with cafe, dance hall, and cabins for overnighters. It was shortly after when Harry decided to focus on fly fishing. Perfectly situated to access some of the West's most famous trout streams, Harry knew there was huge potential to grow the business even more. Through acquaintances and other like-minded business owners associated with the Perkins family, legwork began to develop the Orvis Lodge Endorsement Program. And in 1974, so it's believed, Warm River Inn, freshly renamed Three Rivers Ranch, became the very first Orvis-endorsed fly fishing lodge. The Orvis endorsement, I think, set it uh, up from anything else, and that standard was going to be from the basic. Are the rooms clean? Are the beds made properly? Is there 
a certain criteria for guides, meaning Orvis endorsed guides that would have used Orvis equipment for one thing, but also had the knowledge and the expertise to be able to, to take guests out and do it well. Doug Gibson, a fishing guide, came into the Three Rivers Ranch picture in 1973 and hasn't looked back. So I came back here and, and uh, I was kind of a renegade. I was, was not uh, too good of a person when I was 17 and 18 years old. I was a smart ass and, and if you got in my way, you got punched. He's been tying flies the better part of 60 years and is sought after as a master tire the world over by his clients. I would, didn't have enough money to buy flies, so Bud taught us out. And, and Arlen Gardner, another friend of mine, found a feather tick mattress in the Teton dump. And we pulled hackle out of that sorted. We'd go down there and sort until your neck was and back was about broke. And then we'd fold it up and put it in a, a seamless bag and stuffed it in in the old car body down there. And then when we'd run out of hackle, we'd go back down there and tie again. Through 40 plus years of guiding, mentoring, and adding his own fly fishing flair to everything he does, Doug is still very much a part of the Three Rivers Ranch family. Doug is like a father figure. He's, he's like a, a father figure, an uncle, a uh, teacher, I mean, he's just, but he's also just downright your best friend. Lonnie Allen is the matriarch at Three Rivers, successful lodge owner, proprietor of five fly fishing shops, a t-shirt business, distiller of award-winning tequila, and one hell of a fly angler. No one can say she's a lady sitting on her laurels. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo! we got a fish! Doug? <laughs> I hear you. For Lonnie Allen, eventual ownership of Three Rivers Ranch was destiny. It all began with a family meeting. The year was 1987, and her father, Harry Lewis, had made a decision. My dad had a meeting with all of our family and decided that he wanted to sell the business and the property it was on. And as we were raised, we were always told that property was the most important thing to hold and that the heritage of where you came from was extremely important. And that hit home with me. When my father decided to sell, we didn't know, but he had been diagnosed with cancer. He felt like that maybe it would be a burden to all of us, that maybe all four of us had different feelings and different thoughts about things, and he didn't want to have any of us be at sorts with each other, because he had seen that in other families where things kind of go crazy. We all left that meeting, uh, went home, discussed it, and Don and I said, let's do it. You know, it just seemed like a good idea. We had little kids, four of them. Um, we thought living back up at Warm River would be a great idea. And after I got over the fact that I might be chopping wood and carrying kerosene again, I thought, not bad. So that's when we moved back. I didn't know as much about fishing back then. My husband, uh, Don, was the one uh, who more or less took care of the guides and, and their jobs, and I more or less took care of housekeeping and the lodge and how it ran and groceries and so on and so forth. It wasn't until we separated in the early 90s that now I was doing both jobs, which was a little alarming for about two seconds until um, a couple of the guides said, oh, you got this. So Lonnie jumped in with both feet, which included getting her outfitter's license, a strong, independent woman living in a male-dominated world. It was no longer going to be husband and wife, it was going to be Lonnie Allen. Thank goodness my name was Lonnie because a lot of people thought it was a guy's name, which helped me tremendously. So one time I had to go up and get my Montana permit because we we're also licensed at Yellowstone Park and in the state of Montana other states now, but back then. I still remember going up to take my outfitter's test, and I walk in the room, and all these burly guys were in there, and they said to me, uh, ma'am, are you here with the coffee and donuts? And I thought, no, I'm here to take the test. 
And I think they were in shock that I was there to take an exam to become the outfitter. So yes, I think there was a little bit of a struggle in a few things that a woman could do something in the man's world, but I've always loved men. Loved men just because of the great talk and the visits that they do. My dad, who was very important to me, and my grandfather, the guys that worked here. I loved their jokes. I became um, something that I had to maybe get rid of that that little bit of being too too feminine or too girly girl in order to fit into the fly shop at this point and not be offended by any stories. And I think that it um, it grew. I there were not very many women in the industry. There were no women guides back then when I started, and that would have been in '87. And it's changed, and thank goodness it has. I think I brought something different than a than maybe a, a man would. I that feminine touch that I tried to dissolve there for a few years actually helped tremendously. It helped with the lodging. It helped with the uh, knowing and being able to decide when a guest comes here. I actually interview them silently. They don't know that's happening to them. But I find out about them. I find out about their family. I find out about their fishing. And I have an ability to do that to then set them up with the right guide that helps them for their trip. I think I've heard maybe a handful of other female lodge owners. I think, I think the I think the industry is changing for the better and they're accepting the female role more. But back when Lonnie took over, I'm sure I'm sure she had to prove herself. I'm sure a lot of guys didn't take her serious because she was female. I think that uh, people enjoy having the Lonnie as the owner because it's you know a di different atmosphere. Our clientele back when I was a younger kid, you know, was uh, majority men. So I think women in the industry, it's you know picking up. It's not uncommon now, and it's being more accepted. More women feel comfortable, I believe, coming here and traveling and you know going on fishing vacation. Even with other people in our industry, I mean, other outfitters in the area, they love having her as an outfitter. I hope that in the future there's more women, you know, outfitters running uh, fishing destinations. But back in the early days, there was a vision for the ranch, not only for Lonnie's future, but for generations to come. Our vision was to make it better. I don't think I really felt different about that until maybe two or three years later when I ended up with the ranch and my husband and I separated, that I thought, okay, now it's time to do something even better than where we were. I wanted to see the growth. I wanted to see it so I could leave a legacy for my children. I saw my kids being involved and loving it. Uh, every one of my children worked here. But two of the boys became guides. My daughter helped serve and helped in the kitchen and did what she would like to do. Justin was a little rug rat back in those days, so he, he was just kind of running around, but he eventually learned to fish and loved it as well. And I could see that there was a, a, a potential for us here, and mainly it was because of our guests. The guests were great. They were some of the best mentors ever. They would share with me their thoughts and ideas. You know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? You know, this might make it a little better. And I listened very, very carefully to whatever our guests would say to me. And I did not think maybe for the first 10 years that I would expand to the other side of the state or that I would open more fly shops, which we now have five. And, what, and why I decided to do that was mainly for my family, because it was important to them to still stay in the business. I definitely wasn't ready to retire and give it up. And it made sure that I had uh, businesses that my children could be involved in. And they loved it as much as I do, they still do. Me being five, remembering what I could, uh, it was a big transition uh, moving our you know, family. I have three other siblings uh, coming from Western Idaho to East Idaho. Yeah, I mean, it was hard with the business at that point from, you know, from what my dad and mom had said that we had maybe had, you know, 21 clients throughout our entire season. And it's not uncommon that we have, you know, 21 clients in a week time frame. So uh, she's grown this business remarkably over the years. Today, Lonnie's influence is felt both by staff and guests. 
It's all about the family-friendly environment at Three Rivers Ranch. My feeling always was is that you should treat people the same way you do your own family, which was very important to me. That they needed just anybody who worked for me, I have just as much respect as I would for any of my own family members. And that was extremely important to me. I mean, our guides have been with us for years and they kind of grew into our family. Uh, staff, I think, has that same feeling of the way, you know, our actions, we don't treat them like a typical you know, nine to five business who you're their employee. They're, you know, our family. It's just very friendly in a family atmosphere. And I think the guests feel that right away, that they feel like family and not that they're just some paying clients to go fishing and they feel like it's a place to hang out and have friends. And I've watched that over the years as a lot of clients are friends. They come the same week. They don't even know each other. They're not related. But they eventually meet each other at the ranch and f fish together. And then they become friends outside of the ranch. And that's all something that, that Lonnie does that, you know, just having that family friendly atmosphere, it's, it's contagious. They all get to have choices here. So if there is something I'm saying, okay, what do you think about this? Should we change this in a cabin or should we do this? They all get their input in it. I think it's extremely important that the people who work with you feel like they have a portion of your business as well, that, that they are just as engaged as where I am. And I, I think we've done that well. Yeah, we are friends, yeah. Uh... It's not a, she's not my boss. I, can't, I tease her all the time about being my boss, but she says, yeah, the fat chance that that would happen, you know. <laughs> no, but we get along good and, and we shit each other, you know, once in a while, so. Uh, no, it's just a mutual respect between each other. And today, Lonnie gives back to the outdoors as much as she can, welcoming anglers from such great organizations as Idaho To Fly, supporting men with cancer, and Higher Ground, supporting everybody that's a veteran. So we have two different groups of people who come out to the ranch. Uh, the first group that started coming out was a group called um, the To Fly. It is a group in Idaho of men who are terminally ill. They're either through cancer or some other ailment. And so what we did was um, they asked me, could you give us a discount to come to your place? And that's probably been six years ago. And I said, I'm not gonna give you a discount. I said, if this is truly what you're doing, I, it's very close to my heart. My father passed away from cancer. I said, we'll just let you come and stay. And I don't do it for the notoriety. And in fact, sometimes they'll say, don't you want it in the newspaper, this, that? or that I said if you need it for your organization great but we do it because we all care and the guides do it as well because they care this was a one fly organization that came in to begin with now it's turned into two fly because they are open to anybody who has a life-threatening illness greatest bunch of people you ever wanted to deal with in your life I, I swear to you I don't know any but any group of people that are as good as them guys they just, yeah, at the end of it, the, they have a circle at the end of, of, of the two-day period that they're with the ranch. And, and uh, to hear these guys, the, the guys who were afflicted, uh, tell what it has meant to them, uh, it's, a, it's a choker, it'll get you. We do another program which is called um, Higher Ground. Higher Ground is based out of Sun Valley, Idaho. They do a wonderful job, and these are war veterans. It's not considered the wounded warriors. It's called higher ground. And these are people who've been in any war, and a lot of them is Afghanistan and uh, Iran, and that have suffered from some post-traumatic. It's uh, kind of like the, the mentally wounded. I love the fact that I'm finally to the point in my world that I can give out give back more than I maybe was able to when I first started. And I think we're all blessed when we do things that are uh, not required, but if you're asked and you're able to do it, we should do it.
Doug Gibson, Lonnie's head guide, literally watched her grow up and is very much part of the Three Rivers Ranch family. He's a modern day cowboy who's a professional fly tire. He makes his own opals for jewelry, builds traditional bow and arrow sets, carves knives, makes arrowheads, and still finds time to wield a fly rod. First word I would say is respect. I respect his knowledge, his ability to work with people, his kindness, his generosity, his mentorship, which has helped me tremendously through times. I know if I ever have a problem, I'll say, Doug, can we chat? Doug is, he's like a second grandfather to me. He helped teach me how to fish, six or seven years old. Um, I could ask him for anything. Uh, he would be there in a heartbeat. Um, everybody knows Doug, it seems like. Um, and he knows pretty much everyone that's been here over the years can carry up, you know, bring up a conversation and talk about anything. He's just a very easygoing, talkable, you know, guy. I have been fortunate enough to watch my kids grow up and also Lonnie's family. The boys and the boys and I are like that, all three of them. And and that to me is a, is a reason enough to, to stick around here and be part of it. I love him as much as I would any other member of my family, which makes me kind of tear up because I worry about him a lot. Um, we've fished together, we've played together, we've traveled together, we've danced our feet off together at different rendezvous and events. Um, I love him. Doug Gibson is my head guide. Has been from the minute that Three Rivers started. He is an absolute wonderful man, father, mentor, guide. Who he is is somebody who comes in with a smile all the time. And with some weird joke that usually isn't that funny, but because of the way he tells it and that he laughs is at his own joke, we all kind of laugh right along with him. His guests who've been with him are like his best friends. He calls them during the winter, he checks in on them, maybe can remember a birthday. And it's, it's stunning to me that we can be looking at a book of photographs and he can remember everybody's names. I think Doug loves Three Rivers as much, if not more than I do. He helped it get going from the beginning. He has the most respect for the people that work here. As far as him wanting to come back and forth and staying for as many years as he has. I think this is his second home. I can't imagine him not being here. Uh, he is at a, he is Three Rivers. He is part of it. He is the soul, the dirt, the spirit, everything that goes along with it. And I, I think his ability, his ability to be kind to everyone, uh, whether you're in the kitchen, whether you're one of the kids uh, that are doing housekeeping, somebody who's working as, as uh, in the yards as um, a caretaker, he's kind to everybody. He treats them just as much as he would in anybody else in his own family. He's, he's just a very kind man. Doug's presence is well appreciated by his Three Rivers Ranch family and the entire fly fishing community. Doug has won in my eyes, a number of awards. First was uh, Guide of the Year Award. I remember when they contacted us and said, somehow you've got to get Doug and his wife and maybe some of the family members to come up to the Orvis Convention. We had to keep it all a big secret, which we did. So he had no idea that he was going to get this award. I couldn't have been prouder, no, could, nor could anybody here. He had just given his life to the sport, helping young people, old people, tying flies. In fact, I don't even know how many hundreds of dozens, thousands of flies he might have tied for us here. And the patterns that he tweaked and fixed just for th Three Rivers. Or the guests that keep coming back because they love him. Or how he's mentored and helped the new guides that are coming uh, to be uh, part of Three Rivers. I couldn't have been prouder of it. I mean, it, we were all just thrilled that he was finally recognized for all the work and the support that he's given. The next award he got from uh, Orvis was a Life Achievement Award. 
He never th imagined that he would ever receive a award for anything he did. He's a very respectful man that would not have ever thought that he deserved that. And with over 4,000 guide days under his belt and having tied literally thousands upon thousands of flies, will we ever see a day where Doug decides to hang up his waders? I don't want to ever retire. I'm, I'm, my health is good. Uh, as long as they pay me, I'll show up. I enjoy it and I, and I have, like I say, every week I have friends that come there, new, the same friends I've had forever. And one moment in particular stands out for Doug over his career. Windsor White is, he is my oldest client and Wink is still alive and he's in, uh, he lives in Florida. He came back uh, two years ago and I fished with him and, and he has arthritis so bad in his hands he can't hardly uh, hold a fly rod anymore. So I'm floating the Henry's Fork with him and, and we're about getting to where we're gonna take out. And I said, there was guys, three or four guys on both sides of the river and a, and a drift boat anchored there too. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if we just caught a big fish right in front of all these and no more got it out of my mouth. Kahwoosh, right in the middle of the river. So we fought this brown and got over as a 22 inch brown. I got it over and he took a picture of it and, and I got it over in a quiet place along a grass bank and just laying there and I, and I was gonna move it with the net because it recessed it because he had it on a long time because he can't, you know, uh, yeah, and the strength anymore. And he said, oh no, don't. He said, don't leave it be right there. And he says, I said, why you want another? No, he said, I just want to look at it. He said, you know, that might be the last brown trout I ever see. That choked me up too. Yeah, it got to me, yeah. Three Rivers Ranch with its storied past, crew of characters, and access to some of the best fly fishing in the West must have a plan to move forward. And with all things Lonnie Allen has brought to the fly fishing table, you can bet number one moving forward is family. Looking towards the future, there's certain things that I still need to take care of here. When I bought the ranch, there were things that were a little worn out, a little tired, and it's important to keep things looking and feeling the same way it did 40 years ago. To still keep the history, but to keep things moving forward. So the future here, I'm, I know that my children all want to continue on what we do. As long as there's fish in the river, and guides and boats. I think they'll continue on my legacy as far as their grandparents as well. My daughter, Mary, does my books, which thank goodness she does because I dislike it very much. Uh, my son, Mitch, guided for me for a number of years and he is hoping to come back and help out, but he's also a big part in the fly shops as well. He is a very good mentor to Chad and Justin my son Chad takes care of all the marketing, our websites, oversees the stores, and uh, Justin has become the general manager. The other thing is not only Doug, who's been with me for the last 40 years, uh, Karen, our chef, has been with us the same, Coco, who does our breakfast. So when you start looking at all the longevity of all the people that have been here that helped out, not only my family, but the guides and the staff, I think I'm a very lucky lady. We are branching out a little bit more, which I think is important. We've done some new things. For instance, we uh, have a shop over in the other side of the state in uh, Boise Eagle area. We now have permits to fish the waters over in that area, and we've hired guides to do that. We've gotten the tequila business. Who in the heck would ever guess that? Uh, which is very exciting that we're doing and have our own spirit now, uh, Valance, which I'm very excited about. And it's her team of supporters, plus all her hard work, that saw Three Rivers Ranch and Lonnie Allen receive the coveted Orvis Endorsed Outfitter of the Year, as well as Lonnie for a lifetime of achievement. Lodge of the Year Award means we've tried to do everything right that Orvis put out for us to do. I've always thought that. It, it isn't a, an award just for the lodge itself. It's an award because we, we follow the rules or we do the things right that we need to do. I took a lot of pride in that. We had our own kind of little get together after we received that award. 
and I had everybody who works for us come. I said, this is your award. We drink champagne, and I said, this is because of you. I can't do this without all of you. I can't do it without the guides, I can't do it without the kitchen staff or the housekeeping. This is an award for all of you. I was so proud. It, it was very emotional for me as well to be up there and get that and have everybody stand up and clap and you almost think, mm, I really probably don't know whether I deserve this or not. It was a little, you know, you can't help but be a little embarrassed when you receive a fabulous award because you're just doing what you do. And so to be recognized for what you do is such a compliment. I think for Lodge of the Year, it's, you know, you have to have uh, a lot of great critiques, both from clients, uh, people in the industry. I think it definitely boosts, uh, you know, being a, hopefully a leadership in the, that industry of fly fishing. People know that if you get that endorsement, um, that they're not wasting their time or money for quality of fishing, uh, their guides, the lodging atmosphere. So I, I, I think it's definitely helped boost um, our business from you know the 90s to 2000s because uh, just our influx of business has skyrocketed. Now when you have uh, both Lonnie and, or my mother and Doug that have won Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, we must be doing something right. I was there for both of them. There might have been a little too much of a Lons involved with hers, but um, yes, we, me and my brothers and a lot of the staff members went to go up there just for that reason. So I'm very proud and honored. No, it's, you know, it's, you do get a little emotional when, you know, you're, it's, you know, the place you've worked so hard to try to improve and uh, for her to get something that honorable, it's, it's just almost emotional. I knew it was coming. Um... We all knew and surprised Lonnie with that. She thought Doug was getting another award. Um, it's, it's an absolute honor to work for somebody that has that award. I think it's the highest award that Orvis gives out. Um, I, don't, I don't know anybody that deserves it more. What that Life Achievement Award meant to me was that we had done it. Not me, we starting with my grandparents, who worked so hard during the homesteading, to my mom and dad, who kept it going, to Doug, to the guides, to the staff, to everybody, that we did it. You know, to my kids, you know, my four kids, um, that we, we made it all happen, and they were being recognized for it. <clears throat> Not me being recognized, but they were being recognized for it. Because they, I guess they can't hold it every, you know, they can't hand out a hundred awards to who I thought should have received it as well. But when push comes to shove, and with all the day-to-day -day that keeps both Lonnie and Doug running and gunning after all these years, it's their relationship as equal mentors, friends, and most importantly, family that make Three Rivers Ranch home away from home for fly anglers, guides, and generations of hands from all over the world. After all, no one works for Three Rivers Ranch. They all work with Lonnie Allen. Can you believe, almost a hundred years ago, box chicken lunches sold trailside to weary wagon travelers started the dream that is now Three Rivers Ranch. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada.